Welcome to another meeting here at your bilingual space Connected, a 30-minute space we use to celebrate amazing human beings that one way or another are doing something to improve their lives and the lives of the ones around them. I am Fabiana Espinosa and I'm guiding you through today's journey from Santa Cruz, Bolivia in South America. Remember that you don't only see us through the Abby Ayala channel, but you can also follow us through Facebook, Twitter, and later on when the show is over on our YouTube channel. show I aim to celebrate people's choices, people's lives, people's passion. None of these aspects of life are determined by age. Some people spend their whole lives searching, looking for their passion, looking for that moment or that talent or that habit that makes them be themselves. Some others are just born knowing it and start their path at a very young age. This is the case of our special guest today. Her name is Elizabeth Anesimo, and she is connecting with us from Los Angeles, California in the US. Before we dive into her experiences, let's meet her. 11-year-old Elizabeth Anesimo is a true child prodigy living among us. Elizabeth has a body work of almost 70 paintings, only comprehensible when you realize she started painting at the age of two. Several of her paintings are already hanging internationally. One is being presented at Children's Art Contest in Japan, among 98,000 entries from all over the world. This international artist comes home most afternoons from school to climb trees with her best friend who lives next door. But she is also a voracious reader. Her bedroom is filled wall to wall with books about art. She loves to paint and says, it makes me feel good to paint what is running around in my head. It is my pleasure today to introduce Elizabeth Anissimo. Elizabeth, thank you so much for taking the time to be with us today. I am sure we interrupt you. You probably were in the middle of your work or just the middle of your day and just by you accepting and taking the time to do this interview, it's so much for me. I am very happy to have you here. Welcome to Connected. Let's go ahead with the question number one. Elizabeth, tell me, I know your career has just well not just started but there is still a long path for you to go but how did you lean towards the path of art have you had any influence well originally my parents used to take me traveling a lot around Europe and there I was exposed to a lot of beautiful artwork and culture and I really liked it so I ended up trying to do what it was and I ended up just getting connected. I felt like this was me and over the years I would do it more and more. Either I was just drawing something super duper random and I actually really like to experiment with art and my parents would always like, they would always like have a lot of fun with it and they too would help me sometimes. They would sit next to me and they actually got me like paints and clay and canvas and brushes and I would just experiment with all of this. Sometimes I would draw people with dog heads for some reason, just for the fun of it. I see. And um, you have pieces, like you, you have done some pieces at a very early age, at three years old. So yeah. tell us about those pieces. What did you come up with? Well, well I came up with different things, things that I thought were interesting. Well, I don't remember much, but I <laughs> sure know that when I look back at them, they bring back a lot of great memories of how I was just sitting at the table and just 
dreaming off into ideas and thinking and just thinking every piece with a lot of creativity and work and just really putting a lot into every piece just making every piece every piece of me well i guess it just came from the museums i would always remember everything and if i saw like this beautiful painting from this part of the museum and then i would take see this painting i would usually like remember them and really grasp onto them and some of them i actually still remember to this day and I would go when I was little and I'd see the styles, I'd look at the brush marks. Even though I was so young and many people would have thought that I don't understand what I was doing, I was actually watching documentaries about these artists and trying to learn as much as information I can about art and the history. Awesome. Let's move forward. Tell us about your experience illustrating. You, had, you illustrated a children's book, correct? Tell us, yes. how was your creative process there? Well, I was doing it with my godmother and I had a lot of fun. Our creative process was mostly sitting on the couch and rereading the book and rethinking different ideas. And then me sitting there and making different sketches of reading the book and then making sketches of what exactly happens in the scene. And then when I would come home to my studio, I would go and I would make this sketch on a big piece of canvas and paint it. I would read this book, the one that think many, many ideas, many, many possible scenes and looks and strokes and marks and mediums. And I would look through all of this and I'd think, and then I'd pick all of the options and I'd just take this kind of like a sketch, a picture in my mind and put it on the canvas. That's awesome. And tell me about your, tell me about your studio. How, when was the day when you decided, okay, I need a place, I need a space, I need a studio? Well, I guess it was somewhere around the year 2014 when it all started. I went to, my parents took me to the show called The Pageant of the Masters. And it was where they do living art and I was very, very interested in it. And I decided to try it. And I started doing it in my kitchen first and on the floor and just drawing these big pieces on like big pieces of canvas and redrawing that canvas every time. And then my parents stepped in and they sacrificed their garage. And my dad built a stage for me, which is right behind me right now, where I would repaint every project. In fact, if you actually go to the side of the stage, there is at least a couple inches of paint visible you can see every single project overlap oh wow that's awesome and then elizabeth okay you just mentioned and this was actually where my next uh, question was going you specialize or like what you work right now the most it's on tableau vivant correct tell us yes. what is that exactly and how did you lean to it well tableau vivant is actually french for living picture. And it actually started around the early 19th to the 20th century, where people would, in theaters, they would paint themselves, paint costumes and props, and or sometimes they had a, like, a scene behind them, or theatrical lighting, and they would be silent and they would move. So they would recreate paintings and do these works of art and I think it was an extremely beautiful combination of theater and art and the way I leaned towards it was actually when I went to pageant of the masters and they kind of do what they did there many 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 years ago um, they would make a big scene behind them behind the people the people would be in costume carefully staged silent and they would just recreate these big paintings. And I actually thought that this was amazing and I wanted to try it. And so I ended up trying it on canvas, but they did theirs, they would recreate old masters paintings and I didn't want to recreate something. So instead I did my own paintings based on the styles of the old masters. And tell me, when you uh, when we talk about the old master's influences, who are the ones you look up to? 
Well, I look up to Rembrandt and Picasso. Mostly I look up to artists of Flemish art, masters, and I look up to the Mona Lisa, which is made by Leonardo da Vinci. And personally, I really like just going to museums and learning about new artists and looking at their the way they would use their brushes, the stroke, the the way they would paint, how defined they would make their details. And I would pick this all up and then I would come home and I would make my own painting based on their style, like based on their like strokes, the way they would paint faces, what exactly they would paint. Right. That's amazing how can like you are able to actually already uh, recognize what you like and what you want to use in order to make your own work. Tell us about what were you able to do with your work? I've seen that you participated on some actions and that you've been helping like through your work other people. Tell me about that experience please. Well, through my work I have been helping big charity events to support different causes and just doing it and so through my work I've been letting myself allowing myself to really express myself to show what I feel and how I feel. Right. And Elizabeth, how is it how is one of your days? Because you are still young and you still have to go to school and I'm like all of us when we're kids there are several things that we need to do. But you also are very um passion about your work and very disciplined. So tell me about how do you manage all of this in your life? Well, I actually don't go to school. I do homeschool. Okay. So my well, but that doing homeschool means also having some yeah. time to work on your books and yeah. homework and stuff like that. Yeah. So purposely I wake up early, like bright and early before the sun comes up so I can do my homeschool which is like 6 a.m. approximately. And then when the sun rises and I get natural light, which is a key aspect of my art, because studio light, it's artificial. And sometimes when, when you do something in studio light and then use natural light, the colors are not the same, they are different. So I tend to, once the sun rises, I open my garage and work for around 10 to 12 hours approximately sometimes because I get really attached to my artwork and maybe I get like a few food breaks because I get hungry. Good! And, uh, <laughs> yeah, pretty much. And then I go to sleep. <laughs> right. That, that's a, like a long... Like, sometimes it's a long I thought. go with friends or when I'm not painting anything, I go to museums to look at more artwork and gather more ideas. Right, and you're actually in the in a very awesome place to be. LA also, it, there's a lot of art there and there's a lot of creativity going on. I cannot wait to yep. hear any uh, more about you, Elizabeth. We're gonna go to a fast cut and we'll be right back. People at home, yep. stay connected. We'll be right back. Welcome back everyone. And we are still connected with Elizabeth who is talking to us all the way from LA in the US. Elizabeth, once again, thank you so much for being here and I am thrilled to hear your story and to know about your work. Let's go with the last question. Uh, within your path and besides everything you have to do and you are still learning, what would you like to see disappear in the world? What is something what? that you say, you know, I, want, I would like this to just to be over with and on the other hand, what would you like to see get better, to see more? Well, I would like to see bullying disappear because when I used to go to normal school, I got bullied a lot because I was different and what I did was not what, not what they usually do and because I just shared different interests, I got bullied for it, I got bullied for random things, for just being a, for just liking to art and liking to learn and all that. And I really would like to see education to become more affordable so less people end up being on the streets and more people can easily receive a good job and raise a nice family. And I also wanna see people 
smile more often. People get to have fun, express themselves, and just be themselves without anyone bothering them. And then just want like chase their dreams and just reach it. Just be themselves. Like have no one out there, have nothing stopping them because they have a good education and they understand how. What would you project in your life? I would project in my own life the thought of just being yourself and not having anything to worry about just getting to be yourself express yourself and there's nothing really stopping you from that but sometimes you create barriers for yourself and it's true but I tend to even though I may sometimes create myself like a barrier I overcome it because it's me and it's my choice of life and I want to say that to other people that it's their choice and it's their life and they have only what they think will stop them is what will stop them because they've already set this up this is kind of like their mindset and if they get rid of this mindset they can overcome this they can overcome this barrier that is stopping them from doing something that they want to do right and Elizabeth, what do you think about, like, let's say you just shared with us one past, like one time of your life where you had a hard time at school with other kids uh, and bullying. So today you have, you are an artist, you have an Instagram page, you have a Facebook page, you have followers, and uh, you have people that are always like commenting and telling you how beautiful your, your work is. What do you, how do you feel about that? Well, I feel like I have achieved many things in my life and but I'm am getting closer to reaching my goal every second of my life. Just going and doing what I need to do and what I would like to do. And I just, whenever I do something, do another project, I build up more and more. I go up and I get higher. And I get, but there's still so much to do before I can actually reach my dream. That's why I keep working and doing and putting effort so I can reach my dream, so I can finally follow my heart and get it. You have worked with different groups of people, right? I think you have you yeah. you work with some dancers. You also work with um, with little children. Tell me about, from all of your projects, from all of the different paintings you have, you have done, which one is the most, the one that, you know, you have a special, a special, a soft spot for? Well, I can't say that I have a soft spot because each of them is different. Each of them is special in their own way. Not, not one of them is better than the other because there's always going to be one that's going to be new and it's going to beat that one and I just think that they're all extraordinary because every single time I do a project they're different in their own way they contain a new aspect of learning that I've learned and they are made in a different style or they are a different choice of color and they're very different and the people in them like for example I can have kids singing and then and another one will have grown-ups having fun and I just think that I just think that it's connected to my heart all of them are part of me a piece of me for example when I was painting my dad my dad he was originally supposed to be a cameraman but he decided to have fun with it and he found a violin an old violin that I had painted and decided to be a happy violinist and we were all having so much fun and I just find that every single project each I have so much stuff in this garage and so much different each project is from something and it each represents something something that is part of me and that is special to me and the people there are also I actually am still in contact with all of them and we sometimes have so much fun we even hang out sometimes outside of my art projects great well I want to say thank you to you and also to your beautiful family because they support you so much. It's I can see them through you. And also I cannot wait to 
like follow you and see what else you're gonna be doing in the future. For now, I wanna give you a space so you can greet the audience and also share your social media information. Go ahead. Okay, well, hello everyone. <laughs> My name is Elizabeth, as you may know, and my social media is right above my head. Elizabeth, this is an underscore, <laughs> and this is Amy Shimo, is my name, and it's... Thank you so much for watching this video, and it means a lot to me that you actually um, invited me to do this, and I feel really excited, and it was a great experience. Thank you, Elizabeth. A big kiss into LA, always be well, and until next time, for sure, I'm gonna be following you. Bye, Elizabeth, thank you. Bye. Elizabeth's path is inspiring. Whether you are into art or not, having the right attitude to conquer challenging situations is key nowadays, regardless of your age. As Elizabeth said, there is nothing we can overcome. I will come back in a week with a new topic and a new friend. Nominate a person you love, you admire, or somebody you would like to support by writing me an email to conectadosbolivia24 at gmail.com. Let's get in touch and let the world know about them. Stay connected and until next time with me. Goodbye.